unexplained infertility, the diagnosis nobody ever wants, and it's always complicated today. Hey friends, I'm diving into unexplained infertility, the treatments that are available and what you need to know. First of all, before I dive in, I just wanna say thank you so much for your support of this channel. For watching this video alone, you are helping spread my message of fertility awareness and education to more people. So for that, thank you. If you like these videos, I'm gonna keep them coming, so subscribe so we can keep, keep growing. Okay, so unexplained infertility. It's one of the worst diagnoses because as human beings, we love to know this is my problem, so this is my solution. So when I tell somebody, hey, you have unexplained infertility, it is usually very unrewarding because there's nothing clear as to what's going on. Now, in order to be diagnosed with unexplained infertility, you have to first have infertility. So this means you've been trying to get pregnant without conceiving for 12 months if you're under age 35 or six months if you're 35 and older. And again, it's unexplained, so nothing's obviously wrong. This means you have regular periods, you're able to have intercourse around the fertile window. There's nothing preventing things from happening. So you've been trying to get pregnant, all the parts appear to be working, and you come in for a diagnosis. And we diagnose to confirm that all these things are in fact the case, that there's normal semen parameters, that anatomy is normal, that your tubes are open, and your uterus is normal, that you're, you are in fact ovulating, and we check to see where you you are in measures of ovarian reserve. And when these things come back normal, your anatomy is normal, you're ovulating, and there are sperm present and moving in normal amounts, and we don't have an answer, now you have unexplained infertility. It sucks. The other thing that sucks about it is that it significantly drops your chance of getting pregnant per month. So you can be really young, and you may be hearing from people, oh, you're so young, that's okay, but yet your chance of getting pregnant is very low. Now, it's not zero, and I tell everybody this. You may be able to go and get pregnant. It just may not be very efficient, and it may take you a long time to get to each pregnancy, or it may never happen for you. And is that what you're banking your entire family building experience on? So truly, some of the top causes of unexplained fertility one is a fertilization issue. So egg and sperm have difficulty meeting. Other things that may be going on is maybe environmental. So things like endometriosis or diseases that cause high level of inflammation. Those inflammatory markers live throughout the whole body. So they get into the fallopian tubes. And does that cause a toxic environment? The IVF lab is perfect. So fertilization and early embryo development may be able to grow in a more neutral, positive place. So that helps overcome it also. There's also issues with quality, like egg quality, sperm quality, embryo quality, and those may be at least understood better in the lab, and we may get an idea of where to target improvement in the future. There's really two main treatments for unexplained infertility. You can increase the number of eggs and sperm together, or you can do IVF and get egg and sperm together. Okay, this chart, we as reproductive endocrinologists use this all the time. This is from Sparoff, it's one of the leading textbooks, and it's an accumulation of a bunch of different studies, and I'm gonna put a couple studies up at the end really quickly just to drive home this point. This is the efficacy of treatments for unexplained infertility per cycle, so I don't care about the total. This is per month that you do the treatment. So you can see that if you do nothing, your chance of getting pregnant is two to 3%. So it's low, but not no. Now, what are all the options I have available for you? So the chance of getting pregnant with no treatment, if you, once you get diagnosed with unexplained infertility, is two to 4% per cycle. Remember this is per cycle, so not cumulative, but for each month that you attempt this. So you just keep having sex, timing intercourse, two to 4%. It could happen, but it may not. You can see that doing an IUI, which is intrauterine insemination. This is where we take the sperm, it gets cleaned and processed, and on the day of ovulation, we inject it into the uterus. No change. None. No change. If you have unexplained fertility, do not just go pay for natural cycle IUI. Not worth it. Next is medications to make you ovulate. That can be either with oral medications or with injectable hormones. Oral medications are Clomid or Clomiphene citrate or Letrozole, also called Femara. Almost always look at Clomid because it's an older medication, so there's more data on it. How Clomid and Letrozole work is it tells the brain to send out more FSH. So if you remember FSH, it's the hormone that comes from the brain that stimulates a follicle or an egg to grow. I have an entire video on menstrual cycle basics if you want a refresher. Or you can do injectable hormones like actually FSH. 
The downside to taking FSH is that it's an injection and it is more costly. So you have to give yourself shots and it costs more money and it's harder to get in the target zone. Anytime you take medications, you're upping the chance of multiples. And I know when you're struggling with infertility, you are going to tell me, bring it on. I will take the two babies. And for the most part, people with twins do great. And I don't really bat an eye diagnosing somebody with twins, but I do with triplets. And there are triplets in my world because of both of these treatment options, both oral medications and from injectable hormones. So we have to be mindful of what we're doing. So we usually set a very narrow target zone for most people that's two to three eggs, meaning if there's four or more, the cycle will be canceled. The target zone may get higher if you are older because there's a higher prevalence of having abnormal eggs. If you're doing one of these cycles, your doctor should have a target and you should know how many eggs. Well, how many will get me canceled? How many are we going to proceed? Because one of the guiding principles is that you should not be worse than where you are when you walk into my office. If you get pregnant with quintuplets and you lose them all, you are worse than when you walked in the door. And so we have to be very mindful of this. But in this option of just making you ovulate more eggs, when you use Colmid, it's two to 4%, the same, no difference. So I have people all the time who come in and they get unexplained fertility and they don't wanna do fertility treatments. They tell me this all the time. IVF is too scary. Can we just do some Colmid? No, if you ovulate, it is not helping you. Gonadotropins or FSH is not much better, five to seven percent. So most of us do not consider these treatments for unexplained infertility. Natural cycle IUI or ovulation induction medications in a woman who already ovulates is not deemed to be beneficial for unexplained infertility. However, combining them can help. So you can do something called super ovulation plus IUI. It is 10% at best. If it's Clomid with IUI, we say it's five to 10. If it's gonadotropins plus IUI, it's seven to 10. So it's not even much more, even though you're using injectable hormones and spending more money. That means nine out of 10 times that you do that treatment, you will not be pregnant. So if you have unexplained fertility and your doctor says, let's do Clomid IUI or let's do injectable hormones IUI, they don't tell you that it's a 10% at best chance of success. They're hiding something that you deserve to know. The best treatment for unexplained fertility is going to be IVF. Hands down, it's IVF. In these studies, you can see a success rate between 25 to 45%. This is depending on age, and this does not include genetic testing of embryos. We can get higher success rates when we do genetic testing of embryos, but that's not what was evaluated here. So you can see there's no way you can look at it and act like 25 to 45% is not markedly better than five to 10 or seven to 10. It's way better than two to 4%. So this is where most people with unexplained infertility should be focusing. And what I usually say is, I'm not telling you you have to do it. You can decide that a 10% chance of success is okay for you. You're the driver's seat, but it's my job to give you that data. IVF is the gold standard here. So what is IVF? Again, an entire video on IVF, so please go learn about it. This is what I tell every couple with unexplained infertility. You don't have to do IVF, but you owe it to yourself to understand the process so that you can know why you are declining it if you are doing so. To put IVF simply, it is getting all the eggs that are available in one month, getting them all to grow with injectable hormones, taking them out of the body, and then fertilizing them in the lab by taking in a sperm and putting it inside an egg. That type of fertilization called ICSI or intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Embryos are then followed in the lab. They can be transferred, frozen, or have genetic testing done. But the point is you're going to get a much higher chance of getting pregnant by doing IVF, and it may give you the opportunity to achieve your full family planning goals in the future. A couple trials worth mentioning. This is the FAST trial. It is a randomized clinical trial to evaluate optimal treatment for unexplained infertility, the FAST tracker standard treatment. In this trial, there were two main groups. Group number one had three rounds of Clomid IUI, three rounds of FSH or injectable hormone IUI, and then went to IVF. In group two, or the accelerated arm, did clone had up to three rounds of Clomid IUI and then went on to IVF. So they skipped the injectable hormone part. Those who were in the accelerated arm got pregnant faster. So this study had two different folds. They were looking at the chance of getting pregnant, the time to pregnancy, and also the cost per pregnancy. So you spent less money the faster you went to IVF. And that is because at a 10% chance of success, only a few people will get pregnant after those cycles. The other interesting thing here is it showed us that FSH IUI did not add much. We did not have a huge group of people getting pregnant in that group. The other trial that I talk about with patients all the time is the FORT-T trial. FORT-T is the randomized clinical trial to determine optimal infertility treatment in older couples, the 40 and over treatment trial. Similar-ish to the other trial, except what happened is women were 38 to 42 in this trial. These women all had unexplained infertility for six months and they were divided into three main groups, Clomid IUI for two cycles, 
FSH IUI for two cycles or right to IVF. The ones that did IUI first went to IVF afterward. At the end of the two cycles of the same kind, the cumulative pregnancy rates were 21.6 for Clomid IUI, 17.3 for FSH IUI, and 49% for the IVF group. So this study showed that in women who were 38 and older, there was no benefit to IUI cycles, that you had a faster time to pregnancy, and you spent less money if you went directly to IVF over any IUIs. It also further supported the fact that gonadotropin IUI looks like it has limited utility and unexplained infertility. When we talk about unexplained infertility, it is a tough place to be, and so I'm sending you love if you're struggling with it right now. Please educate yourself and ask questions of your doctor so that you can make the decisions that are best for you right now and in the future. Subscribe if you like this content. I'd love to hear what else you'd like to see. There's always more fertility-based information on the As A Woman podcast. Feel free to listen to it. And you can always follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.